Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to talk about the impact of mild aortic insufficiency after aortic valve repair. So we all know for significant aortic valve disease, the, the gold standard is the aortic valve replacement. Um, results from Dr. David's group has shown, however, that in younger patients uh, at 20 years, the freedom from reintervention uh, is only 32%. And this has been reflected in other papers from other groups with other valves from Dr. Cohn's group that 15-year reoperation uh, freedom is, again, 40% in younger patients. So aortic valve repair is an attractive alternative uh, with benefits of no anticoagulation, low risk of thromboembolism, endocarditis, and maybe some potential for growth, especially in the younger patients. So first question we need to ask ourselves, can we repair the valve? So at Brussels and many other centers of the world, we have shown that for various pathologies of aortic insufficiency, like bicuspid and tricuspid, degenerative disease, uh, endocarditis, aneurysmal valve disease dissections, the valve can be repaired. So this is a repair-oriented classification of aortic insufficiency published by the Brussels group, uh, type 1 with normal cusp motion, type 2 with cusp prolapse, and uh, type 3 with cusp restriction. So this is rigorously followed uh, in our center there. So second question, should the valve be repaired? And then many other questions uh, arise. One of them that I've addressed is, what is the effect of mild post-op AI, residual AI after aortic valve repair? So this is what we try to look at and its effect on valve intervention and overall survival in patients long term. So we included all patients between December 96 and June 2010 and divided them into two groups uh, in terms of post-operative uh, mild AI, group one with no AI and group two with mild AI. So respectively, 305 and 161 patients in each group. Mean follow-up was 133 and 139 months, uh, respectively. So in terms of preoperative characteristics, there wasn't any significant difference apart from the fact that the group one patients were significantly younger as compared to group two patients. Uh, in terms of uh, preoperative symptoms, they were pretty similar. Maybe group two patients were slightly more symptomatic as compared to group one patients. So in terms of uh, echocardiography, preoperatively, the AI grade was similar between the two groups. Uh, there was a higher percentage of bicuspid valves in group one, which was a no AI group. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the ventricles were more dilated in the group uh, with mild AI postoperatively perhaps reflecting uh, a long-standing disease. In terms of aortic dimensions, uh, there wasn't any significant difference between the two groups. Uh, in terms of operations that were performed, uh, we found that uh, when the valve sparing uh, operation, including reimplantation or remodeling, was used with or without leaflet repair, uh, there was a, a lesser incidence of mild AI as compared to no AI. Now, if you look at the cusp pathology, uh, there was no significant difference between the two groups in terms of calcification, fibrosis, fenestration, prolapse, restriction. Prolapse being the most uh, common pathology followed by restriction. So we use various techniques of aortic valve repair described uh, by Dr. David and uh, subsequently by Dr. Alcori. Uh, various surgical techniques, we have divided them into tri four tricuspid valve repair as well as bicuspid valve repair. We find that when the resuspension technique as well as subcommissional annuloplasty was used, uh, there was a high incidence of mild AI in, when, uh, on the tricuspid aortic valve. Uh, on the other hand, if we look at the bicuspid valve repair, when the RAFA repair, direct suture, and resuspension was performed, uh, that seemed to be protective against what mild AI. We don't exactly know why. Uh, with the use of Valsalva graft, it seems uh, the incidence of mild AI postoperatively was uh, significantly lower uh, as compared to a sta straight graft. So in terms of postoperative characteristics, uh, mortality was pretty similar. Early complications were similar between the two groups. However, at discharge, because this is a definition of the group, there was significant difference uh, between aortic insufficiency between the two groups. And note, there were some patients from mild AI that have moved into the moderate AI group by discharge. Mean aortic valve gradient was similar between the two groups. 
So if you look at the latest follow-up, uh, there was a significant difference between the period of follow-up between the two groups. Uh, and that is important, although it's not the same, but that is important because as we will see, there is a significant difference in terms of overall outcome between the two groups, even though the period of follow-up is shorter in group two, which is a mild AI group. Overall mortality uh, is similar as well as complications and a rate of reoperation at latest follow-up. So look at latest follow-up. Uh, the group with mild AI had a higher percentage of uh, reoperation, especially in the early period after surgery. And the aortic insufficiency at latest follow-up again was higher in the mild AI group as compared to the no AI group. Uh, symptomatically, both patients um, were pretty similar actually. So looking at the overall survival, um, they were pretty similar. Uh, freedom from severe AI was again similar at 10 years, 83% in the first group and 85% in the second group. However, the freedom from uh, valve reoperation was uh, significantly better in the no AI group, 88% uh, as compared to 73%. Uh, we performed a multivariate analysis and we found the independent predictor of post-operative mild AI as well as severe AI at follow-up was increased preoperative and diastolic diameter. Uh, and we also tried to look at the AV reoperation, and we found that younger age and postoperative mild AI was a significant predictor of uh, uh, reintervention after aortic valve repair. So, in conclusion, uh, mild AI, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, associated with reduced freedom from AV valve intervention after aortic valve repair.